Hello, everyone. My name is Yong Kang He. I'm a lead cloud native SC of Custom by Veeam, supporting the Asia Pacific region. Uh, this is me. I am 27 times multi cloud certified. I've been heavily involved in the IT for over 20 years. Today, I'm going to show you how to build a Red Hat OpenShift container platform. Uh, basically, that's a Red Hat version Kubernetes cluster on IBM Cloud, why the UI, why the web console. So first of all, where I can deploy OpenShift container platform? So you can deploy to any one of the supported public cloud platform. It could be IBM Cloud, AWS, Azure Cloud, Google Cloud, VMware Cloud, or can be any supported private cloud platform, like a Red Hat OpenShift OpenStack platform or Red Hat virtualization. And you can also deploy to VMware vSphere. Yes, since IBM acquired a Red Hat, a Red Hat uh, OpenShift container platform can also be deployed to any one of the supported IBM hardware, could be IBM Power Series, IBM Z Series, and the Linux One. And the both IBM Z Series and the Linux One for Red Hat Enterprise Linux KVM. And if you like, you can also deploy it to bare metal machine or any other platform agnostic uh, infrastructure. So today I'm going to show you how to deploy to IBM Cloud. So there is a little bit of preparation tasks here. So first of all, you need to have an IBM Cloud account with enough access permissions. Secondly, you need to have a web browser and you need to have OC command line tool installed and the Kubernetes CLI installed. And uh, since it's running on IBM Cloud, you need to have the IBM Cloud CI installed as well. So how to build an OCP cluster? Uh, there are a, a couple of options. The option one might be the easiest one. You just go to the IBM Cloud Web Console and uh, deploy from there. So if you're not aware, you just go to cloud.ibm.com. And second option is you might like to use the IBM Cloud CRI, which can be automated. So if you choose to do by the CRI, you just run IBM Cloud, OC cluster create, uh, followed by the required parameters. The third option is the IBM Cloud API or SDKs. So today I'm going to show you how to build the cluster from the IBM Cloud Web Console. Okay, let me jump to the web console to show you how to build the cluster. So if you haven't logged in, you just go to cloud.ibm.com and from the dashboard, you should be able to find that there is an option to create an OpenShift cluster. So you might have noticed there is a create OpenShift cluster here. Roughly, you need about 20 minutes. And uh, if you like, you can also go to the search bar to type uh, OpenShift. And uh, from the navigation menu, you can go directly to OpenShift. And uh, from there, you can create the cluster or you can go to Kubernetes. Kubernetes, the main difference is uh, for Kubernetes, if you select the Kubernetes, you've got two options. You can either create an IBM Kubernetes service or OpenShift cluster. So I'm gonna just click the dashboard here, create an OpenShift cluster. Okay, there are uh, a couple of options here. So first of all, which version you want to deploy? So I'm gonna choose the latest version, 4.8.11. And uh, for the infrastructure, I'm gonna choose the VPC, uh, which is more isolated network. So I choose the VPC. If you don't have a VPC exist, it will prompt you to create a new VPC. And you might also need to have an existing cloud object storage account. 
So if you don't have one, you need to create a cloud object storage account. That is used for the internal, uh, I believe that is for the internal registry, yes. And for the location, I'm, I want to put everything to my resource group. So I actually, I created the RG for young one. That's my resource group. If you don't have one, you can either use the default or create a new one. So for the work zone, since it's a testing, I don't need the, all the nodes to spread across all three availability zone. I just use CME3 as an availability zone. And for the worker node, I might have, so by default, I got a four CPU, that's the flavor, four CPU, 16 gig memory. And by default, we're going to create three work nodes. But if you want to configure OpenShift container storage, I, you might want to increase the number of nodes. So for this case, I will increase the work nodes to six in total. That should be able to support you to install and configure OpenShift container storage. Otherwise, you are constantly hit the errors. You are running out of the CPU or memory. So the OCS does require a little bit uh, extra CPU and memories. So for the worker pool name, I might just leave it as a default. And yeah, what else? The cluster name. Uh, I want to make it uh, easy for me. So I'm making the name OCP for Yong one. You can optionally add the tags. I want to create a tag say owner is Yong. That's all I need. Just click create. So we'll start to creating the cluster. So this step might take uh, about 20 minutes. So once it pop it up, I will pause the recording and come back once the creation finished. So you might have noticed from the screen, we are preparing the master and the workers. So this step does take around 20 minutes. Let me pause here and I will come back. Okay. I believe now the cluster has been successfully built. So from the overview page, you can see you've got six nodes, all of them are normal and the add-on of normal masses, it is also normal. And uh, yeah, you've got six total nodes, all of them are normal. And uh, before I show you how to log into the web console, just quickly to highlight, there are a little bit uh, add-ons here. If you choose by default, you got IBM block storage for the VPC already deployed. But if you choose to use OpenShift container storage, here is a way to install OpenShift data foundation. Basically that's the OpenShift container storage. You just click install and wait the installation finish. So you also take a, like a, about, a, could be around, you know, 10 plus minutes. Okay, so to access the console to web, uh, you click the blue box here. So open shift the web console and then it will launch the web console. So let me click a proceed. So for some reason, if it doesn't work, it could be because of the, you know, I'm pretty sure it's because of the uh, cookie. Uh, instead of a clean up, a clean the cookie, I just open a new, you know, incognito window and I paste the link here. So I click uh, advanced and proceed. So while we are loading the web console, let me come back to the slide deck to show you how to deploy an application into the new OpenShift uh, container platform. So from here, you log into the web console, you can click uh, operator hub and it is under the operators from the OCP web console. And from there, you can do a search. Uh, I'm going to show you how to deploy a Redis application. So you go to the search bar, enter Redis and select the Redis operator community version. And from there, you can uh, click continue and uh, click restore. 
after that, you got option. Do you want to specif uh, specify a namespace um, for the Redis installation? Uh, typically, yes. Uh, so under the install the namespace, you click create a namespace. Now you give a name, I call it new Redis and click create. So finally, you click the install button and wait for the task to complete. And from there, you can verify if the Redis is up running. So let me come back to the console. Um, actually, let me log in again. So I enter my password. So now we should be able to log into the OpenShift web console. So this is my web shift, uh, uh, OpenShift web console. Okay, it takes a little bit of time to loading up. So from here, if I want to deploy application, as I said earlier, go to operators, under operators, and there is operator hub. And if I want to install database, uh, instead we click from here, you just do a Redis. From the search bar, I want to install Redis operate community version, click continue. And from here, you can click install. And you got an option by default, it, it will be deployed to your default namespace. I want to choose a different namespace. So I select a namespace or create a name, new namespace. I make the new namespace, Redis, uh, application equal Redis. And uh, I might also choose owner equal young, that's it. Click create. So we actually create the new namespace here and click restore, uh, install. Okay, now we just wait for the Redis operator installation finish. It might take uh, a couple of minutes, let's see. Okay, as you can see now Redis already successfully being installed. If you want to verify, you can click a view operator and you can see the details here. So if you want, this is your namespace. If, you are, if I click on the namespace, it will show the details of the namespace. And uh, this is your uh, pod actually. So you can monitor the port status in the memory, uh, the metrics. If I want to verify the workloads, under the workloads, go to the ports, you can select a different project. In this case, Redis, you can see my Redis port is up running. So that basically how we can quickly deploy an application into the new OCP platform. So with that, let me come back to my slide deck here. So a few links to show you where to get more details. Uh, first of all, if you're new to Red Hat OpenShift, so there is a little bit documentation here, how to understand Red Hat OpenShift on IBM Cloud. And there is a getting started uh, uh, menu as well. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, you need to install the OpenShift CLI and also IBM Cloud CLI. Here is a link to show you how to install the CLI. So that's pretty much all I want to cover for today. Coming next, uh, I'm planning to show you how to build a OCP Kubernetes cluster via the CLI, which can be automated. And uh, secondly, I want to show you, you got your containerized application running on Kubernetes, running on OCP cluster, how to protect these containerized applications. Yeah, that's all I want to cover for today. And uh, thank you very much for your time and uh, hope it is useful to you. If you want to connect with me, feel free to send me email or via LinkedIn or Twitter. You can also visit my GitHub page and my YouTube channel. Thank you very much.